So in the last video, we built a simple AI agent in less than 10 minutes. Uh, and today we're going to give it some tools so it can interact with your Google Calendar and your Gmail. So if we go to add a tool here and let's say, let's go to um, the Gmail tool. You can see that we have to connect to Gmail with a credential. Um, so we click, click create new credential and then it gives you this screen here. So you want to connect using OAuth. To. Um, and to do this, we have to go to console.cloud.google.com, sign into your account, um, and then we will create a new project, call it whatever. So I'll do any time demo. Uh, that's fine. Then you want to go to this menu over here and go to APIs and services and OAuth consent screen. Uh, so click on external. This is just setting up so that um, it allows Anytend to authorize you to access uh, your Google account through, uh, through, through the Gmail node. Okay, so give it an app name. I'll just do Anytend demo. Support email, you can just put in your uh, whatever email address is on your account. Uh, don't need to worry about most of this. Uh, again, just put in your email here. Save and continue. Uh, and save and continue, I think, here. Now we need to add a user. So again, just add in yourself again, save and continue, and then back to dashboard. Then we want to go to credentials and create credentials, uh, OAuth client ID. Uh, it's a web, web application, just call it again, any then demo or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we need to add a redirect URI. And that is what you get from here. So copy this and drop that in there. Create. And that's all done. And then you've got the client ID and the client secret that you need. So copy the client ID, paste it there. Copy the client secret, paste it there. Hit save. And now you can sign in with Google. So I've just got a a pop-up window come up here. I'm just uh, saying allow to all these, um, all these permissions, uh, and that's done. So it's connected. So now we are connected to our Gmail account. And the last thing we have to do is go back into the con the cloud console, uh, go to enabled APIs and services, um, add enable APIs and services, and search for Gmail API. then you can just press enable. And that's, that's done. Uh, and while we're here, we might as well oops, add in the calendar. This allows it, this, it, this, this is where you dictate which parts of the Google Cloud Console uh, any end can access. So I've given it permission to inter interact with the calendar API and the Gmail API. So that's all done. So this, this should now work properly. So there's a few things we have to set up here. Firstly is tool description. I would always um, set this manually um, because it, it will just give you this kind of nonsense uh, otherwise. So just make it very clear, simple English instructions. So um, use this tool to send an email. Simple, right? Um, and then you've got a bunch of different things you can do within within uh, within the Gmail node. So we're going to use message, but um, you can also look at like uh, drafts and threads and labels and stuff. And then the operations you can send, get, uh, you know, mark markers in red, add labels to things, um, that kind of thing. But we're just going to do a simple send message. Um, 
and the email type is going to be just text for simplicity. And then here's where we use our first bit of, uh, of AI um, integration with uh, NAN's agent capabilities. So with this tool, we want, the, we want to be able to tell our agent, send an email to X uh, that says this. Um, so if we, if we just put in, if we hard code something in here, then it's only going to be able to send an email to that email address that's in there. Um, so what we have to do is tell, um, tell the agent that when you look at this tool, you should use your agency, your intelligence to figure out what should go in here and fill it in from the context that the, um, the user has instructed them to do so. So we're going to change this from fixed to expression. And then that allows us to start putting in dynamic variables. So NA10 has this tool called uh, from, a from AI, this function called from AI. So all, all, all these functions start with double curly brackets, and then you get a menu that comes up here. So just, uh, and you type a dollar sign, and then start typing from, and you get from AI. You can see how this works. So it's just a simple comma separated list. So you've got the key, which is the name of what you're gonna call it. So I would call it email, the description, and these are all optional, uh, which just describes what it is, and then type and default value. So I, I usually, almost always just use the first two. Um, so we click on this, and then we want to give it, the, uh, here you can see the key. So the key, I'm gonna say email, and then the description. I'm gonna just type simply the email address to be sent to. And, and that's that basically. So now this the agent, when it calls this tool, it will, in the to uh, field, it will say, right, this is gonna come from, from AI. Um, I need to put in something called email and the description that the AI can read, it says, right, the email address to be sent to. Okay, so if I send a message saying, send an e email to john at yahoo.com, then it's gonna pretty easily be able to figure out, okay, that's the, that's the, address I need to send it to. Um, and we're going to do the exact same thing for subject and message. So we'll just change this to expression, we'll just paste that in, and we'll just change email to subject, and then we'll change this to um, the subject of the email. And then again here, message the message, uh, the content of the email. And that's basically everything done there. Also, just make sure you name these properly. Um, send an email. Okay, so that's done. Uh, so now this agent should be able to send an email. So let's try that out. Let's open up chat. You'll notice that I have now moved my uh, face from the bottom left to the bottom right of the screen because I covered my the chat window in the last video I did. So let's say, please send an email to my email address, asking if he's free for a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. So the agent is using its, uh, the AI model and it's sending an email. So if we go into this, we can see um, the response has been sent and here's the content. So email, it's taken the email from the context. Subject is that. And then, oh, I'm still talking like a pirate. <laughs> okay, I hope this message finds you well. I'm writing to ask you if you're free for a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay. And then, then just to show that the email uh, was actually sent, here you go. This has come through and uh, I've got the email. So there's a few things here. Um, obviously, uh, it's filled in your name here, which is uh, as, as a placeholder, which is no good. Uh, and also it's got this little thing uh, added on the end, which we don't really want, because we don't want 
everyone to know that we're using a AI agent to send our emails. So in here, we can go down to the end and add option, um, append any 10 attribution and just turn that off. And that's that taken care of. Uh, and then to fix this other thing, um, this is going to come down to the prompting. So I'm going to get much more, I'm going to do a full video on how to prompt agents um, later on, but just briefly, the, the AI agent, um, this is the this is the prompt, right? Is you're a helpful assistant who speaks like a pirate. Um, so it doesn't have any context about who who it is that this email is coming from, who who's who's speaking to them, uh, or anything. So if I just change this quickly and say, um, you are the personal assistant of Neil Stevenson, uh, and you send emails on his behalf. Um, as well as help him with various other tasks. So that, let's keep it really simple for now. So let's save that. Let's try this one more time. Let's just say asking if he wants a slice of cake. That's done. So let's go back. So now, <laughs> uh, so now the now it knows that um, it's acting on behalf as, as, of me because I'm because it's a personal assistant for me. So it signed off my name, and also the any ten attribution is gone. Uh, so let's give our agent one more tool, and we will give it the Google Calendar tool. So we have to create a credential for each one of these. So um, we, we can still use the same details as last time. So just take the, the client ID. Uh, which is this one. And the client secret. And then you have to sign in with Google again. And just give it permissions again. That's done. Okay, so again, tool description, set it manually. Um, use this tool to get calendar events uh, using a before and after time, date and time. Um, so again, just quickly, uh, we're using the resource is going to be events because we're going to look for events. Um, and the operation is we want to get many. So that means we can you, you can obviously do creating and deleting and updating events, but we want to ask this agent what's on our calendar, for instance. Um, so pick the calendar. Um, we want to return all. Um, in fact, we'll give it a, a limit of, of 10, actually. Um, and then we're going to add in a couple uh, of options. We're going to do after and before. And we're going to use the same trick as last time. I'm going to do it as an expression. And we're going to do curly brackets dollar sign from AI. I'm just going to say after date. And we'll say um, date and time that the event should be after. And then we'll just copy that paste in here and we'll do uh, before date and the date and time that the event should be before. So this is because I might say to the agent um, what events are in my calendar today or what do I have on next week and it can take that and then it can uh, take that context and, and create some hard uh, before and after dates, so that it's only bringing back events from a certain time. And it will use that, obviously, in conjunction with the the time function that is in the agent's um, uh, general instructions. So that should do for that, I think. And then we'll just rename this uh, 
get events. Uh, I kind of hope this works. So let's say, um, in fact, one sec, let me create an event. Okay, I've just put a calendar uh, event in, record YouTube tutorial video from 1 to 2 p.m. today. So now let's say, um, what events do I have on today? Hopefully, it's going to use the calendar tool. I've got one event scheduled for today. Record YouTube video, 1 to 2 p.m. Lovely. So you can already see how this is becoming quite useful quite quickly. Um, so we're going to keep giving this agent more tools, uh, some sub-agents, some better prompts over the coming videos.